So before I jump straight into the word, a couple other things I remembered that I need to remind you of. Next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we have a long-standing history uh, of honoring veterans. Um, And on Memorial Day, we honor those who have passed on. Um, In order for us to do that, we need your help. Uh, And so if you have uh, a loved one who has served in the armed forces and has since passed on, um, we would love to include them in that memorial that will be presented during the service uh, next Sunday. Uh, But we need that information. Um, So you can do that a couple of different ways. You can send us a private message uh, through Facebook, through Messenger. Uh, You can email us the information at admin at lifesongfamily.org. Or you can just write it down and you can give that to me or to Pastor Gary uh, before you leave today. Uh, we, we really absolutely have to have that no later than Wednesday of this coming week uh, in order to include them in that presentation. Um, so really we just need their name, uh, their rank, uh, the branch of the military in which they served, and the years in which they served. And if you don't know the exact years, but you know they served during a particular conflict or a particular war, you can include that information. That that will um, suffice for how we put that memorial together. Um, And so that's coming up. Um, And then also June 5th, I believe it is, it's one week later, um, we're going to honor any graduating seniors that we have in the church family. Um, And so... Same deal, you can write it down, you can give it to me, send it through a private message or to that same email, admin at lifesongfamily.org. We need to know their name, Uh, we need to know what school they're graduating from, and if they know, what their post-graduation plans are. Now this one is for those graduating seniors who are a part of our church Family, You might know people in all far-flung parts of the country and that kind of thing. And congratulations to them. We love them too. Um, But we're going to focus on our graduating seniors on that Sunday. um, And ideally, they'll be here that Sunday. Uh, So we need that information. Um, Not quite as quickly. Probably have about another week on that one uh, to help us get together for that. Um, Finally, you're like, would you just get on with it already? Yeah, just hang on, okay? Um, finally, I do want to remind you, we're coming up on the deadline of the switch on our electronic giving options. Um, so if you've been giving through Simple Give, um, you need to make sure that you make the change to Church Center uh, by the end of this month. Effective June 1st, the old platform goes away completely. Um, and if you've had recurring gifts in there, you need to make sure that you delete those out as well. I think most everybody uh, has done that, but I want to make sure that I mention that. Uh, If you're not an electronic giver, you do always have the option to give at the giving box in the back of the worship center right over there by the double doors. You don't even have to put your name on it. If you don't care about tax statements, you can just drop it in there and make that a part of your worship. I promise you God uses it in bigger, mightier, more incredible ways than you or I could ever imagine or do on our own. Uh, And so we're committed to trusting God with our finances, and we have seen him move and do great things and expect no less for the future. And so now I'm done catching you up on all the things that I forgot to tell you about at the beginning of service. Let me take a drink of water. So last week, last week we introduced this 30 days for Jesus challenge. I talked about it. Uh, It's gone out on our socials. It's hit the website. Um, So it's posted in all those kinds of places, but in case you have missed it, this is what the 30 Days for Jesus Challenge is about. It's 30 days, and we're going to dedicate to 10 minutes of Bible reading per day, 10 minutes of prayer per day, and then for 30 days, we're going to fast or abstain from our biggest 
distractions. Our biggest distractions. So let me just make it really clear. You cannot call your husband or your wife your biggest distraction (laughs) and use that as an excuse to not have to talk to them for a month. It doesn't work that way. But your biggest distraction, give it up for 30 days. And then for 30 days, be intentional about having Christ-centered conversations at home, work, school, or wherever else you might go. That's it in a nutshell. 30 days we're going to dedicate to do those things. And so the idea behind this is that it helps God's people look and be more like the people we are supposed to be. And in the process, hopefully it helps us develop some habits that will stick with us in our spiritual growth. So last week when I introduced this, it kind of went like this. I said, 10 minutes of Bible reading. And people were like, oh, I, I can do that. I can do that. I can, man, I can put the Bible on my phone and I can knock out 10 minutes during my morning constitutional. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I can knock that out in 10 minutes when I take my morning dump. That's what I was talking about. 10 minutes of prayer. People are like, oh, that, that, shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be too hard. I can do that. Be intentional about talking about Jesus. And people are like, Jesus is cool. I can talk about Jesus. I'd love to talk about Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. I love to talk about him. Give something up for 30 days. What kind of crack you smoking, preacher? <laughs> so maybe it wasn't quite that bad, but I feel like it was close. See, the truth is this. Most of us will gladly add something to our life for God but we find it far more difficult to remove something for him. We'll add, we'll add, we'll add. But I don't want to give something up. That's very uncomfortable. Well, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to start to dig into some ideas today that are going to point us to the truth of why it's so important to cut some things out of our life. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to start here at verses 7 through 9. Matthew 18, 7 through 9, and it says this, Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. So now before we break out the knife and we start cutting off limbs, let's be clear about something. It is never really your eye or your hand or your foot or any other body part that causes you to sin. Now, you can always trace sin back to a heart issue. And that heart issue is directly related to my relationship with God and the people around me. But before we get there, we have to understand what sin is in the first place. And real quick, quickly, we'll jump to the idea that, well, of course I understand what sin is, and we immediately go for the big ones. It's, it's murder. It's stealing. It's lying. It's adultery. It's idolatry. It's, you know, the big, the big ten, right? The ten commandments, those things that we're not supposed to do. Those, that's, that's sin. But I would challenge you that there's a lot of things that we let into our lives that are sin that we don't think of so readily as being sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, says it very simply. 
everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. So for a baseline definition of what is sin, sin is breaking God's law, breaking God's commandments. And there's a lot more than ten. So let me ask you a question here. Have you ever been pulled over for speeding in an area where you didn't know what the speed limit was? It just made your day, didn't it? Or how about this? Have you ever been charged a late fee on a bill that you didn't know was due because it never came in the mail? And you were just so excited. In either case, not knowing what the bill was due or not knowing what the speed limit was, did the fact that you didn't know get you out of the penalty? No. Now, maybe you spoke to some wonderful customer service representative who had compassion on you and said, well, we'll go ahead and waive that just this once. But that was not your ignorance getting you out of the penalty. No, the penalty was still yours to pay even though you didn't know about it. Those are very frustrating situations to be in. And many people feel like when it comes to matters of sin, that God does that to us. They don't understand how they can be held accountable for failing to meet a standard or failing to adhere to a law that they don't even know about. But we cannot claim Ignorance when it comes to God's law. I'm going to take you back, way back, to Leviticus, everybody's favorite book of the Bible. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 17. And just one verse knocks out this argument for ignorance. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, Even though they do not know it, they are guilty and will be held responsible. And so before you say, well, that's Old Testament, but now, now, now we have grace. Let me flip ahead to Luke chapter 12, verses 47 and 48. So we've crossed the line from Old Testament to New Testament, one side of the cross to the other, basically. Verse 47, the servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So even here in the New Testament, we see that ignorance does not excuse you. There are still consequences. So these verses basically set up the question, do you want to get punched in the stomach five times or 15 times? And my answer is, well, I'd rather not get punched in the stomach at all. But that's not a choice. It's not a choice. When you break the law, when you stray from the will of the master, there are consequences, whether you know that you've done it or not. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities... His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And that, that, friends, is what grace is all about. 
See that customer service representative who said, well, we're going to go ahead and waive that late fee? Or, or maybe that trooper or that judge who said, we're going to throw out a fine on this ticket? Your ignorance had nothing to do with you not having to pay the penalty. They showed you mercy. They showed you grace. Mercy because you didn't have to pay what you rightfully owed as a penalty. And grace because they gave you the ability to walk out without paying the price. Mercy and grace. We don't receive the punishment that is rightfully ours because Jesus took our place and paid the price. And that was for each and every person. We cannot lose sight of that. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. That's you, that's me, that's your neighbor, that's the guy down the street, that's the guy in the White House, that's the guy in North Korea, that's the guy in South America, that's everybody, all have sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So all have sinned, no one has an excuse, you can't claim ignorance, and even if you do, you are still responsible. That is what scripture has just laid out here. So then what is the law? What is the standard? Now we could go back and we could talk about Torah. We could go back and we could talk about all of the Old Testament. We talk about all the commands and all of the law and how there are just hundreds and so many to keep and the weight of that and that nobody is really capable of doing so and to break one is to break it all. We talk about all of those things. But what is the most important to me is not what any pastor, priest, rabbi, theologian, or scholar has to say, but what does God himself say is the standard? What does he say? Matthew 22. Matthew 22 is where we're going to find the answer today. What is the standard? Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40 Say this, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Jesus sums up the whole law. The whole law in these two commandments, these two statements. Love and keep God first and love others with the same love that you have for yourself. And so now we're going to bring it back around to cutting things off that cause you to sin, that cause you to break God's law. So anything that causes you to take God out of first place or anything that causes you to think or act as though you are higher, holier, mightier, or more important than the person next to you, it is something that causes you to sin and therefore needs to be cut off, needs to be cut out. So those distractions that we're being challenged to let go of are quite possibly a source of sin in our life. And these are things that need to be removed. So now, 
when we go back and ask the question, what is sin? I want you to steer away from those big ones, the low-hanging fruit, the easy ones that are so, so obvious and easy to pick out. And I want you to start asking questions about sin in your life through the lens of, does this get in the way of me keeping God first? And does this get in the way of me loving others as I love myself? Because these are Jesus' words about the law and how we keep it. And so now when we start talking about distractions, what is it distracting you from? Who is it distracting you from? What relationships are suffering because of those distractions? What relationships could be better with those distractions removed? How could God be better honored because that has been removed from your life? How could you love God and love others better if your attention wasn't focused on those distractions? So if you're struggling in your relationship with God, what are the things that are the source of that struggle? What are the things that you put in front of your face, before your eyes? What are the things that you allow into your ears that lead you to a struggle in your relationship with God? Look, I know these aren't easy questions. I know that these aren't fun questions to answer because it goes back to that idea of I am readily willing to add things to my life for God, but I'm far less willing to cut something out of my life for God. What are those things that cause you to struggle in your relationship with God? More than that, though, if you're struggling in your relationship with your spouse, with your kids, with your parents, with your boss, with your coworker, with your neighbor, what are the things that are the source of that struggle? And now I want to be clear. Yes, I understand that there are two parts to every relationship. There's you and the other person. I get that. But I'm not asking you today, what's wrong with them? Because that's where we're going to turn, right? Why am I struggling in my relationship with that person? Well, because they're this and they do that and they said this thing and they're just... Except not. Because they might do and be all those things... And you still have a choice in how you respond to all those things. You still have a choice in how you respond. You still have a choice in how you treat them despite, in spite of what they do and who they are. And so when I ask this question, what are the things that are the source of that relationship struggle? The answer that we need to be looking for needs to include words like I, me, my, and sometimes we and our. Because you're a part of it too. And if you are a part of the relationship, you have to choose whether you're going to be a part of the struggle or a part of the solution. Those are the two choices. Am I going to be a part of the struggle Or am I going to be a part of the solution? And above all else, you need to pray on this. You need to think on this. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through this and show you what you need to let go of. Struggling in my relationship with that person because 15 years ago, 
they did this thing that I still haven't gotten over, that I still haven't gotten past, that I still haven't been able to forgive. And here's, here's the tough part, folks. When I'm harboring unforgiveness, when I'm holding on to hurt, when I'm letting that fester and grow into rot in my soul, it's no longer just affecting my relationship with that person. It's now affecting my relationship with God too and everyone else around me. I have a fun illustration that I'm gonna close this out with, but I'm not there yet. I'm gonna tell you a story Some of you know this story, parts of it, and many of you do not. And if you don't, it's okay that you don't. And you need to understand that this is not a part of your history, but it is a part of the history of the church that you call home. So I had the opportunity to sit down and talk to our board last Sunday and share what I'm about to share with you. And now we get to embrace this together as a church. This October will mark 10 years since a very ugly dispute erupted inside of Lifesong Family Church. Now, most of us that are sitting in this room today were not here when that took place. My wife and I were not a part of the church. We came along six months later or so. And because of what this story includes, you'll understand why most of the people who were a part of that are no longer here. But the short version of the story is that ideas, opinions, and egos erupted. And at the end, at the end of it all, this church split in two. This was 10 years ago. That split resulted in the formation and creation of another church here in Lewisburg. That church, I'm not afraid to tell you, is New Life Church. And they kind of meet over off the square, um, actually in a building that they rent from another church right now, while they go through what they need to go through in preparation for building a new building. That was 10 years ago. 10 years ago. For 10 years, I came along six months after that, It was very fresh. And a year later, for some people, it was still feeling very fresh. And five years later, for some people, it was still feeling very fresh. And in that amount of time, one of the pastors who was leading one of those two churches was no longer leading that church. Someone else stepped in. And more time passed. And for many people, even though it was years later, the hurt and the heartache and all the things that came with it were still very fresh. And more time passed. And then another pastor was gone. And then I became the pastor here at Lifesong. At that point, we're seven, eight years after the fact. And there were still people who could talk about what happened like it was yesterday with all of the heartache and the hurt and the pain. And on the other side of town, there was another church where the same things were taking place. 
people who were keeping old wounds open for no real beneficial reason. And then a little more time passed, and the other pastor at the church on the other side of town, he experienced the ultimate retirement from ministry and went home to Jesus. That's the only way pastors retire, by the way. It's great benefits. But that's about what we got. So Pastor Richard passed on. And a new pastor, after a few months, came in to lead that church. And he wasn't around 10 years ago either. And he and I are now pastoring churches full of people who really weren't a part of all that that went on 10 years ago. And yet, there's a division, there's a break, there's a schism. And I don't believe that God wants his church divided like that. And I'm not just talking about that church on the other side of town. I'm talking about there should be nobody who is worshiping in a church here in Lewisburg or Marshall County today that looks across the street, across town, or across the county and puts their nose up Because somebody worships under some other banner or name of a church. It should not be that way. And I can can tell there's some people in the room where your cheeks are clenched right now. I'm not talking, church, about two functional churches coming back into one. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that Pastor Joel at New Life, and I have had some great opportunities to sit and talk to one another. We're excited that on July 3rd, he and his wife, and I and my wife, and another pastor from another church, and some other musicians are the group that are going to come together and collectively lead worship for this event on July 3rd. We're going to worship together. We're going to be intentional about letting 10 years ago be dead in the grave where it needs to be and moving forward because God has big plans for Lewisburg and Marshall County. So you can unclench your cheeks a little bit. This church isn't going anywhere and neither is that one. Other than to say where we're going, we're going together and we, I believe, are going to step into the next part of God's great destiny for his church here in Marshall County. That is what I'm talking about that needs to happen in our own individual lives. I want you to be a part of that. And as opportunities come up and we collaborate and work together with that church and other churches, I want you to be involved. It's important that you be involved. It's important that we recognize that the body of Christ is not just inside the walls of Lifesong Family Church, but it's inside the walls of every church and out in the streets too. That is the kingdom at work. Laying aside church names and denominations and affiliations and 10-year-old history that nobody even cares about anymore. And stepping forward into what God has called us to. If you want to do that in your own life on a personal level, there's some things you've got to let go of. There's some things you've got to cut out. There's some forgiveness that you have to extend. There's some grace and some mercy that you have to make available to the people around you. There's some good, godly wisdom that you need to receive somewhere, somehow, from somebody that's going to speak life into your relationships with other people and with God. And it's going to lead you to have to cut some things out. Because you can't just keep adding things to your life with the expectation that nothing 
is going to have to be removed. And so, I told you I was going to do it, and now I am. I need my lovely assistant to join me on the platform today. Vanna, would you come up here? (laughs) It's Ricky. No, I didn't tell him that I was going to do this. Um, So before we get to uh, the illustration, I'm going to use you as an illustration. Um, (laughs) Ricky Ricky is our church treasurer. Um, And so at the end of the day, when it comes down to the dollars and cents and and all the money that comes in and out, um, if there's something wrong, that's who's in in trouble. Um, (laughs) Not really. But Ricky has has come in to kind of help manage our finances, keep track of our finances, and there's other people that do that along with him. Um, But if it's not okay to share this, tell me afterwards. Um, (laughs) Isn't it though? It was just a few weeks ago that Ricky was in a very difficult place with his job. And from conversations we've had, I I think we both agree now that you knew God said it was time to get out of there. But it's hard to leave a job when you don't have another one to go to. I've been there. Ricky was there. I think some of you have been there. Finally, a day came when the straw broke the camel's back and Ricky said, I'm done, and he was out. And he cut that out of his life. And in the weeks since then, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in the weeks since then, what I have seen God do in Ricky has been amazing to watch. I have watched sacrificial service pour out of his life that there wasn't even room for before because of the job that he was dealing with and his work situation. I have watched God stir up in Ricky and use Ricky to do amazing things that otherwise he may not have been available to do if he stayed in that situation and just tried to keep adding things without Cutting something out. And so, as your pastor and as your friend, I want to say thank you for being willing to do that. And even though you're a whole lot older than me, it's weird to say this, um, I just want you to say that as your pastor. I am so proud of you for making that choice and stepping up and just doing what God called you to do. So, hoorah for being you. And live in that life. And I think it was probably harder for you to agree to do this, what we're about to do, because you don't really know what we're about to do. You got an idea? Okay. Um, So I gave you something before service started. Now's now's the time to, to pull that out. Okay. So Ricky has a balloon. Um... We're going to let this balloon represent life. And it can be your life, but Ricky's kind of standing in for all of us today. So I need you to blow that about halfway up. So that's probably good. Right about there, we'll go with that. I don't really know how big that balloon gets. So this could take a whole lot longer than what I'm hoping. So about halfway full. These are just the must-dos of life. We all have those. Responsibilities, obligations, requirements that are a part of everyday living. You have to have those in there. No matter who you are, no matter what your situation is, there's things you have to take care of. And those are different for every person, but we all have them. And now we're going to get a little bit more specific. So um, I'll, let, I'll let you 
be the judge of how much additional air needs to be added for this one. Um, but you're, you're married, and so now there's some additional... <laughs> now there's some, some additional responsibility that comes. So just add an appropriate amount there, however much you think that is. I don't know that you actually put any more air in the balloon, but we'll, we'll let you get away with it. We'll let you get away with it. Okay. All right. And, and so right now you're in the process of job searching, right? So there's some additional responsibility and things that go along with that. You know what that feels like, so add some more air for that. Okay. Yep, yeah. Yeah, good job adding more for that than you did for your wife. That was wise. <laughs> but then we're, then we're going to add. We're going to add some more things, okay? We're going to add, say, this 30 days for Jesus challenge. And so now on top of whatever it was you were doing before, all the things that come with your marriage, all the things that come with your job search, now we're going to add commitments to a minimum of 10 minutes a day of Bible reading. And then we're going to add an additional minimum 10 minutes a day of prayer. And, and then we're going to add, now you're, you have the added pressure of trying to be intentional about having conversations about Christ with the people around you. You notice that I skipped something in that 30 days, right? We've not cut anything out yet. So now you've got friends, yeah, and they want time and attention, and they want to invite themselves to come over to your house and play games. Yeah, okay, I don't know. I'm not going to take offense to that, but okay. And then you have other family members that need your time and your attention from time to time. Just the look, I know your in-laws. You better put some serious air in that balloon. (laughs) You all see where this is headed, right? Okay. So if, if Ricky keeps adding air to this balloon, what's gonna happen? It's going to bust. It's going to be loud. If Ricky, don't do this, but if Ricky just lets go of all of it, what happens? Flies all over the place. We all get covered in his spittle that's going to come flying out of the balloon. It's unpleasant for everybody. And at the end... The balloon's deflated, and he's completely lost track of wherever it went. Now, whatever it is for you, 30 days, intentionally release some kind of a distraction out of there. Sometimes when you have to do that, it's really going to stink. But Ricky's got control. It's not out of his hands. It's not flying all over the place and making a mess on people. It hasn't blown up in his face and exploded. And while it's certainly more inflated than where we started with just the basic challenges of life, he's still got it well in hand. He's still got it under control. You know that they're waiting for it. So now, no. That's how you responsibly manage it. Okay? Now, Ricky, I just want you to start adding things to life.
He's going to add a new job. He's going to add financial woes and worries. He's going to add concerns about what's going to happen tomorrow because we don't know. We don't know. Who knows what gas prices will do? Who knows what grocery stores are going to look like? He's going to add all of those stresses and the responsibility that he feels to be able to provide for his household and his family. And then maybe, maybe a car is going to break down. And now you're going to have to figure out whether it's worth repairing the car or whether you're going to replace the car. Oh, it's getting harder to put more in there? See, now it's even getting more difficult to add to what he already has. But if he doesn't make the choice to cut some of these things out, it's going to continue to be hard, but he's still going to continue to add. He's getting worn out with it. Life is getting stretched Thinner and thinner and thinner. He's having trouble finding room to add things to life. And yet there's still more that needs his attention. Yep. Good job. Thank you for helping. There's the point, guys. Because now, because now there's no putting this back together. Now there's no, you know, I could, you, it's not going to hold anything. Because I stretched as far as I could go and I broke. I don't know what needs to be cut off, what needs to be let out, what needs to be released from your life. But what I do know is that if we are not intentional about regularly checking in on our own well-being and our relationship with God and our relationship with other people, life's going to explode there's not going to be any putting it back together. That's not what I want for you as your pastor, and I know that that's not what God wants for your life. I'm going to invite Holly and Grace in to come back up and lead us in one final song today, but as they do, I want you think about that balloon of your life. I want you to think about what the gauge is. How much tension is there right now? How much more can you add? And how much are you able to let out? What needs to be let out? And as you think about those things, what are the things that are in there that are taking up space and stretching that balloon that never really should have been there in the first place? What are the things that you not only need to let go of to give yourself a little more room, but you need to let go of to give God all the room he needs? That is why it's not the 30 minutes for Jesus challenge. In all honesty, I don't know that 30 days is enough. Maybe it should be the 30 years 
for Jesus' challenge. Because some of these things are hard to let go of. Some of these things take root, deep, deep root in our life. Some of these things we let out a little bit over here and then put it right back in over there. The idea is not that this is a one-time cure-all for all your woes of life. The idea is that we have to be intentional about this on a regular basis. Because you will only stretch so far. You can only add so much before it all just breaks. And I'll give you one challenge further. Everything that Ricky did was about how much life he could blow into that balloon. What if you quit trying to be the source of life in your life and let God be the one who breathes life into you? That makes all the difference. So I don't know what you're letting go of today. I don't know what you need to cut out. But I do believe that God will bring it to the front of your mind and to the center of your heart. And I believe that when you're intentional about it and you give him the space to move and do what he needs to do and let go of the things that you don't need to be holding on to, he will transform you and your life in amazing and miraculous ways. But just like I said last week, and I'll say it again this week, I can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. Only you can make that choice. Only you can choose to let go, to make room. And then God does all of the transformation, all of the restoration, and all of the changing. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you Thank you that you are our source of life. That you breathe life into us. That God, if we will make the choice to let you do that, to leave room for you to have your proper place, God, there is no limit to what you can do in us what you can do through us, what you can do for us. God, we thank you that if we're hearing these words today, it is not too late for us. That there is still an opportunity to cut things out, to let things go. to experience new life and new freedom and newfound joy that can only come from you. And so God, whether we started 30 days for you last week, this week, or, or in some day down the road here, God, we ask you to use those days for your glory. for your glory in our lives, in our hearts, in our homes, in our families, in our church, in our community, in our world.
I want to speak very specifically to somebody right now. You are visualizing that balloon of life. And you don't even know where to begin or how to begin to release some of that pressure. Because to even just let a little bit out feels like you're going to have to let go and just let that balloon fly around the room. But to, con- but, but, but to not continue adding to it feels like failure. I want you to hear very specifically today, you are not a failure, you are not alone, and you do not have to do this under your own power. You can hold on to that balloon of your life And let everything go. You can let everything out. And he will fill it back up to exactly where it needs to be. I really... I really hope that you are hearing this today. When you let that out, that balloon is going to look shriveled and wilted and ugly and gross. And you are going to think, oh my God, what have I done? And what you have done is you have let go of it all so that it can all be filled back up by Jesus. That is what you need to do. Let go of your desire to be in control and let him have his way. And he will not fail. He will not fall. He will not falter. He will show himself faithful and true in every way. And just as he has shown himself faithful, time and time and time and time again throughout the pages of scripture through, 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 throughout history throughout the days of our lives lived out over weeks and months and years Holy Spirit we ask that you would stir in us an overflowing overwhelming joy that our God is good and faithful and true that even when things look worn out even when things look shriveled even when things look broken and beyond hope that he is able to restore Holy Spirit stir it in us let gratitude swell up within our hearts and homes that everything we are everything we do everything we say everything we think everything we believe every day that we live and every breath that we breathe would bring glory and honor to our God and King and Creator God, I have said all that you have for me to say today and now that all is left is for you to have your way here among your people. Move in power. Make your presence and your will known. Speak to our hearts and minds like only you can as we praise you for all that you are and all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, I hope that you've been blessed by this word, encouraged or challenged in some kind of way. If you are joining us for the first time, remember that the experience does not end here. 
I want to invite you to visit lifesongfamily.org slash connect and fill out that digital connect card so we can get to know you better and find out how we can serve you and your family better here at Lifesong Family Church. Of course, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter as well so you can keep up with everything that is happening here at Lifesong Family Church. And as always, as you are able, we invite you to join us in person right here in Lewisburg, Tennessee. We can't wait to see you.